Hello and welcome to Trust Your Glitter. This is Christy. I am going to experiment and right now I'm also doing a Zoom version of this episode just for recording purposes, but I wanted to do an episode this week, which is probably going to come out in pieces. It's probably going to come out in the way it has to because, um, when everything happened this week, I actually did not record a full podcast this week going into the Libra eclipse. And I think part of that is intuition. So just note that this week might be a little bit more emotional for me. And I think that whatever is going on with the current fall of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has me really shook and so this episode is very personal and I'm very self-conscious about being on video so I'm actually going to minimize the screen um I've always like this is so so personal but I've always like been especially since I've been a comic like over the last year I've been or a few years um I definitely have been told by various people that I have like a, a face for radio and all this shit. So there's like a lot of shit going on personally. So I'm just like kind of breaking through those barriers. But when it comes to what's going on as a whole in a community that I think is arising and waking up as, you know, the, the um, whether we consider it the spiritual community or whether we consider it... Um, you know, a global community of people that are kind of arising from the ashes, you know, for a whole bunch of shit that's going on. So right now on my computer, and and I'm probably not going to edit because I really just, I can't edit right now on this computer. I'm looking at two different charts. I'm looking at the chart of the Francis Scott Key Bridge Collapse in Baltimore City which happened on March 26, 2024 at 128 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, which is a Tuesday ruled by the planet Mars. So that is, to me, an act of war. So if you are not a conspiracy person, just also know that this episode might go a little bit too deep into the paint. And if you came for horoscopes, I'll see you another time. If you're here to kind of hear me out regarding the astrology of this incident and regarding the fact that there's just a lot of shit that's happening in the world, then by all means, let's work this through. And one of the things I want to talk about and discuss on this episode is the fact that this is definitely related to the upcoming total solar eclipse but this happened just I guess what the less than 24 20 what is it 22 and a half hours after the partial lunar eclipse in the sign of Libra and so I also want to note this is very much related to the eclipses this is very very much related to this portal that we're in and so I'm going to talk about the fact that Baltimore itself is a portal portal the chesapeake bay is a portal the whole grid system of planet earth is created you know through portals we're on a living body a mother's body whether she's round or flat she's still a body she's still an energy she's still a feminine force so as we're looking at this, the moon's portals are very important to look at, and whether or not we're looking at some sort of axis shift when it comes to planet Earth or whatever, this is something that's really in, imperative to understanding that we're either, and I've said it on many of my episodes before, is that like we either wake up or we stay the fuck asleep. You know, we we either wake up to the fact that something's happening on this planet or we decide that it, it you know, we, the, you can't keep your head in the sand. 
And I tried to get to gather as much data as possible. I rejoined I, intuitively. This has all been intuition. You know, I am currently in Maryland and my intuition, my guidance has been bringing me back to Maryland for many years. As long as I've done stand-up, I've lived in New York City. I've lived in LA many times. I've lived in Austin, Texas a few different times. Every time my gut is like, come back home. Come back to Maryland. You have to be here. You have to witness something. You have to see what's going on. And over the years, you know, I've learned things through spiritual journeys, spiritual sojourns, you know, sacred medicine that I have worked with that has shown me that this is a very important place on this planet that needs to be kept safe. You know, Mother Ocean. And I I am I I can understand. I can understand when people look at things that are occurring and say that they are not connected. I get it. I understand we are being shaken from our foundation. We are being shaken from where we are internally processing. But it would it is a time where we have to look at history and the fact that maybe history we were taught is not actually the history that we understand. I mean, history was not a subject I really connected with in school, and it's not been something that I'm very easily connecting with because I don't think the history reported is actually the history that is our reality. You know, I think I think we're experiencing kind of a crack in in the fundamental systems itself, whether we look at it as some sort of fault, a fault line that that's being shifted in our consciousness and oceans and you know water are our consciousness are our subconscious um energy you know our dreams are our sacred spirituality so i, I want to say like when i look at these charts you know there is you know baltimore i was looking at the incorporated chart of baltimore so um if you see me on the camera i'm not really looking at camera right now so I might be looking to the side etc cetera, etc cetera. but Baltimore the incorporated chart there's a couple different charts for Baltimore but I'm using Baltimore incorporation day is Saturday October 9th 1745 I set the chart for 12 p.m but that is not that's not the angles so we're not we're not going to get the angles and the houses of the chart but it gives me enough information to understand what I would hypothesize to be an attack um, uh, of whether you want to say it's a global trade or maybe it was a tap on the shoulder from a foreign entity. I can't, you know, I can only hypothesize a couple different prospects or um, connections with who actually did this. I mean, there's so many, or even a combination, you know, at this point, but I do want to reference the the movie, Leave the World Behind, which when I saw the movie, you know, I had to watch it twice and I had to freeze a lot of frames and really I was watching on my phone. I froze frame for a couple scenes just to zoom into the background because every single scene in the movie, Leave the World Behind, has a symbolic piece of art or a book, or, you know, numbers on the wall. I mean, the first few scenes of the movie leave the world behind. The triple six comes up. Baltimore's incorporation chart is a Libra sun and an Aries moon with a north node in the sign of Aries. So with a north node at two degrees of Aries, this doesn't make the upcoming total solar eclipse a complete nodal return because the solar eclipse is going to be at 19 degrees of Aries. But when I see this, Baltimore is on the approach to something called a nodal return. So Baltimore is getting like an energetic reset in general based on the incorporation chart. Now, I do not know if um, the Aries moon degree is the exact degree of the moon for Baltimore, but it's within the, the range um, 
the moon moves about 13 degrees a day and according to like the noon chart it's like right in the middle so it could be um an early degree aries moon or like a middle degree aries moon um and that being said the chart of baltimore's incorporation you know itself is very close to a full moon chart so the chart herself is on the approach to a full moon so when i see that you know any full moon energy in general is going to kind of illuminate the energy of baltimore itself and every city has a chart every city has a couple different charts um this baltimore also has a leo chart that also i believe has either an aries moon or a libra moon that would have also been involved in the eclipse as well so our libra lunar eclipse is a releasing and letting go of something and there's no nothing more symbolic of a release and letting go than an actual you know ship releasing <laughs> um you know it, it's it's very symbolic in many ways so i just want to say you know there are souls lost in this and it sucks and really good people it always is the really good people you know it's always the really good people that are lost and so baltimore is directly in the alignment with this incident chart so the event chart itself has a moon right on top of baltimore's sun so the lunar energy of the incident on the 26th took place um where the moon was exactly at 16 degrees libra and the sun of baltimore's incorporated chart is at 16 degrees libra and it just so happens that the mid heaven wasn't exactly conjunct it's at 10 degrees of libra but there is a yod which is called a finger of fate or a finger of god and this has to be exactly timed so the finger of god has like a fan out to the planet venus in the third house of communications networks you know and also we also have mercury in shadow leading up to a mercury retrograde so mercury in shadow um in aries is going to go retrograde on the 1st of April. So we're going to have more information come out regarding this. The other fan out from the yod, from the moon, is 16 degrees um, Taurus, and the planet Jupiter is there. So the yod's energy is, apex of the yod is that potent energy. So you think of like a bow and arrow, or you think of like this boomerang effect is the best way I can describe the energy frequency movement of a yod. But it's something that when we have a yod, say in our natal chart, it's something that we have to fulfill. It's something like when that happens, there's effects that come out of that, but it's like we're fulfilling that fate energy in general. So when I look at this yod where it's like the moon at the top, and the apex out to Venus, the goddess. Um, she is the goddess of love, but in a lot of ways, this is an ode to Venus. This is an offering to the ocean. This is an offering to Venus because Venus is in the sign of Pisces. And then Jupiter, who's also Piscean's planet. So the ocean gods. Very expansive energy, very big, very extra. With the moon. This, to me, is a lunar offering. And so I'm going to tie this in to the fact that, you know, just a couple of days before there was a incident in Russia at the Crocus Music Hall. And I don't have the chart for that, but I do see it as symbolic because the flower, the Crocus, represents the spring, represents Hermes. Um, which is also Mercury, the god of the trickster, the third house. And then also the goddess Persephone, which is rising that phoenix. If we think of the phoenix rising, and we think of the fact that um, 
you know, Persephone's story as she journeys the underworld with Pluto. And Pluto just went through Capricorn like big time. And now she's rising from the ashes and she's rising up. And then if you watch the media pictures, like the mainstream media pictures of the Crocus, you know, music hall, you see the name Crocus and then you see the actual music hall and you're like, okay. So to me, I saw that as a spring equinox, like goddess symbolism, like they're playing in our faces. That's what's going on. So I just want to acknowledge that. I really need to acknowledge that because there's a lot more happening than meets the eye. I'm really actually really terrified to post this and upload this and apologies if like you hear dogs or anything in the background, but it's just, um, you know, it's hard for me to fully wrap my head around everything because I'm trying to get as much information as possible, but I wanted to put out something regarding this. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about this more as we go along and this is a bigger story that's going to be unfolding, but from an astrological perspective, it's right there in the stars. It's right there in the incorporated chart of Baltimore. It's right there in the fact that, you know, there's so much symbolism to the fact that this is, you know, the Francis Scott key bridge. I know a lot of people and conspiracy theorists, especially are talking about how, you know, Francis Scott key is, is attributed to, um, you know, the, the star spangled banner. Um, but there's so much, you know, symbolism that goes along with, um, the Chesapeake Bay. I know this didn't directly take place in the Chesapeake Bay, but from a spiritual perspective, you know, I've always looked at Mary's land as the, the mother of the ocean, the mother of the sea. And, you know, the, the, the symbolism of Atlantis and the symbolism of the fact that we are, we don't, you know, and Russia, if you think about it, just released the archives of, of the Bible. So there's a lot of history that's being shaken up. And the fact that this port in Baltimore is, is so symbolic to access to, you know, a multitude of resources and energy um, imports and exports and, um, how this is going to reroute a lot of the East coast of the United States. And, uh, it's a lot, you know, so I'm going to be here for this journey. Um, you know, this is my home and, uh, and when it, it's, it's just like, you see things, it's hard when you see things ahead of time because it, it it's kind of hard. Like, my podcast the last few weeks, like all I could feel was that I needed to wait, you know, spirit or guidance or angels or whoever it is on the other side was like, you need to wait and before you release any podcast about anything. And um, I wanted to release a podcast about Saros cycles and the um, Crocus music hall thing that went on just because you know, I do believe this is a war on love and our sacred connection to goddess and this planet. And um, my guidance said to wait, and I'm even scared to talk because, you know, it's hard when you say weird shit. And, you know, I've, I've silenced myself for so long. I took myself off X or Twitter. You know, my, I believe my um, Instagram has been blacklisted for a really long time. <laughs> Um, and if you, you go to my Instagram, you'll see that not a lot of my videos get over 200 views. Um, so it's tough. Um, it's tough. And then, you know, trying to just make sense about the fact that this, it, if you really, really look at it, you know, the, the fact that the, the black box tapes, uh, conveniently went out. You know, and then the fact that this ship was also involved in um, uh, an incident in Antwerp, Belgium in 2016, um, you know, the symbolism of the movie Leave the World Behind. And I, I have a, uh, a TikTok about that. I have a little scene, you know, it's, it's a scene where they're making cocktails and, 
you know, one of the guys has a Bikini Kill t-shirt on, which is a punk band, and, uh, like, a revolutionary punk band, and, uh, Julia Roberts is entering the kitchen, and, he, you know, they're drinking cocktails, and the guy goes, like, what's in it, and, um, you know, you gotta try it, or you gotta try it, and then Julia Roberts is like, what's in it? No, thank you, and you see a can of Old Bay in the background, and I had to watch the movie twice to pick that up, but, you know, if you look at Maryland and the state's involvement in, like, a multitude of things from, you know, what happened in 2020 to maybe even things that happened in 2001, you would definitely want to really reflect on what's really going on. So this is just like a short and sweet way to be like, something is happening, ask more questions, and I'll be back with a little bit more astrology as we go along. Lots of love, be safe, and take care.